Hello to all you English lovers out there. You're listening to English Digest with me, Seb, and me, Sam. And in today's graph writing exercise, we have an interesting topic for those of you who are a little more business minded.、Mm -hmm. You know, you like to create your own businesses, or you dream of doing so. We're talking about entrepreneurship. That's spelled E N T R E P R E N. E U R S H I P is a very fancy word <laughs> that means running your own business, basically, or running lots of businesses if you're very successful.、Mm -hmm. 好，同学们有没有想过之后啊，你的未来呢？比方说你毕业之后啊，或是有想要转职，哎，有考虑从事什么样的行业吗？或是呢，像是我们今天的图标写作，想要自己当老板呢？今天呢，就要来讨论一下，创业老师想开店卖鸡排，还是想当网红？自己当老板呢，就是我们就可以用这个很难念的字哦，就是创业了。嗯嗯 So lots of us would like to run our own businesses,、mm -hmm. maybe open a restaurant, maybe do something online, perhaps even something that helps look after the environment.、Mm -hmm. So Sam, if you had the time and money to start a business, what kind of business would you start? Yeah, one thing I really like is shopping.、Mm -hmm. So Who doesn't? yeah, shop for food, shop for clothes, shop for electronic devices,、mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, so opening my own shop would be a good idea, like、mm -hmm. a video game shop or one sells apparel. Right, or you could do a online business too、yeah. to do that. <laughs> okay, so where does entrepreneurship fit into our exercise for today? Well, if you take a look at your magazines, you'll see that we're looking at some of the most common businesses young people in Taiwan want to start. To give you some context, in recent years, being your own boss and starting your own business has become very popular across the nation, especially with recent graduates. You know, people who have just finished college. A survey by One 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 in 2018 actually found that 76% of young people had either begun to start a business or wanted to do so. So that's a huge number of people in Taiwan, and it's actually rising as well. So in our activity. We're going to be looking at some of the types of businesses that young people say they are interested in starting. Now, I don't know if these are official figures, but we can see in the magazine that people are thinking of different ways of doing this. So that's what our assignment is going to be. We're going to explore that information. 嗯哼，好，今天呢，我们是一篇有图表写作。我们呢要依据图表内容呢写一篇英文作文，文长至少要一百二十个单词哦。文章要分两段。那第一段呢，我们就要描述图表的。内容，并且呢要指出这个较受欢迎的类别是哪些。那在第二段落呢，我们就要描述这六个创业类别中呢，你自己比较有兴趣的类别是什么，并且呢要你说明理由。嗯哼 ，Right. So we're going to write a short essay that explains the data and also tells the reader what kind of business we would like to start. So let's start by developing an approach. 嗯哼，好，马上呢看到今天呢我们就是一篇图表写作。那图表写作的重点呢，当然就是要真实呈现出呢。我们图表上面的资讯了，包含像是这个统计数字啦，它描述的事实啦，还有这个数据分布的情形。比方说呢，哪一个最好，哪一个最差，还有呢，它这个调查和报告的说明。比方说呢，是在哪里，针对什么人做的一个报告、一个调查等等，这些资讯呢，都要在我们的文章里面来露出。Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are really important skills to have, actually, not just for your exams,、mm -hmm. but for any research papers you do in college, or even if you're going to do certain jobs later on after you graduate. So, if you're going to work in marketing, Xingxiao, if you're going to be business managers、yes. or journalists as well, Jijia,、yes. you're going to have to know how to understand graph data and、mm -hmm. survey data and present it clearly to target readers. So, what are the common steps we would take when doing some graph-based writing?、Mm -hmm. 好。现在呢，我们马上就要来看一下这个我们一开始拿到图表该怎么办了。第一步呢，我们当然就要分析它了。我们要来看一下里面有哪些重要的讯息。再来呢，我们就要确实的传达这个图表所传达的讯息。比方说呢，我们今天的图表是在讲创业这个主题，针对创业做的调查。那呢，我们就不会写说这个，比方说最受欢迎的夜市小吃是什么。OK， 注意到呢，我们就是跟着这个图表来写。Mm -hmm. Right. So, for example, we could say that in this graph there are six categories. So we saw artisan, that's shogong yi jia. So that is somebody who makes their own crafts、mm -hmm. or makes their own products and sells them too. So, for example, if you're going to make your own wooden flower pots, for、okay. example, <laughs> you make them, you sell them. If you go to Yongkang Jie, for example, you will see a lot of artisans there, yes, a lot of yes, people yes. who make their own things.、Mm -hmm. Another one that was popular was cafe owner, cafe ting lao ban.、Mm -hmm. So 
yes, that's another one which I'm not surprised is popular in Taiwan. <laughs> Everyone has a cafe in Taiwan, I yes. think. Yeah. Social media editor, and that could be somebody who manages social media accounts, mm -hmm. or it could be a blogger as well. Okay. It could be somebody who writes stuff about the world, or their own opinion, or promotes products. All of those could be social media editor. And mobile food truck. So mm -hmm. that is another one which is very trendy now, yes, I think. Yes. And we've got two more tour guides. So you know that one. And internet celebrity, which we can translate as Wang Hong. So if we were talking about YouTube or Instagram, we could also say influencer as well, mm -hmm. or any any platform actually. An influencer is someone who does a lot of product placement, who talks about different products and gets people uh, to yes. buy them. Uh -huh. So I think that's Ye Pei, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Other than that, in the graphs, we could also talk about the size of the study, how many people we asked, or how was the study carried out. So was it carried out with a questionnaire, a list of questions? Did they go and interview people? All of this has an impact on the data you have in your graph. So it's important to include it if you have that information. Mm -hmm. 好，看到它是一个什么样的图表之后呢？再来，我们第二步就是要来解读我们图表的内容了。比方说呢，像是我们今天的图表里面，哎，有哪一些职业上榜了？这些职业又是哪一个最受欢迎？还有呢，我们是对什么人来做这个调查等等？这些资讯呢，就是在我们的第二步骤呢，我们就要来解读这些内容，传达给我们的读者。嗯哼。So what is this information telling us? Well, for example, we can tell that people likely gave more than one answer because if not, we would, couldn't have seventy percent of people saying they wanted to be artisans while another sixty-two percent wanted to run yeah. cafes. <laughs> That's not possible. You can't have more than a hundred percent. We could also say that food and crafts are the most popular types of businesses because the first, second, and fourth choices are all connected to those two things in some way. We could also say that the majority, so that's the more than fifty percent,、mm -hmm. or the vast majority, that's way more than fifty percent of people who responded wanted to work in one of those fields. 嗯哼，描述完了之后呢，最后就要根据我们看到这个图表的内容，加上你自己的看法了，也就是。我们今天的这个第二段落，你呢就要来描述自己的看法、自己的推论，或是呢你自己的经验呢，来呼应我们的主题了。我们在提示里面呢就讲说，第二段呢就从这几个工作里面选出一个你最想做的工作。那这个部分呢就是你的这个看法、你的推论、你的经验了。Mm -hmm. Lastly, a quick tip: when describing and interpreting the information in graphs and studies, it's important to use simple, straightforward language that makes it easy for the reader to understand what you're saying. When you're reporting facts that hold up your argument in a debate or an essay, you need people to understand them so that you can persuade them of your point of view.、Mm -hmm. So leave all of your delicate, fancy, creative English for <laughs> writing stories, poems,、yeah. all of that. Don't use anything too complicated here.、Mm -hmm. Because we are describing a graph, right? An ED writing project wouldn't be complete without some brainstorming, of course.、Mm. So we're going to get onto that now. So let's start building the vocabulary that we are going to use in this project. We know our theme: young entrepreneurship.、Mm -hmm. So let's start by adding some words that we can connect with today's graph and the points we've made so far.、Mm -hmm. So Sam, what can you think of? What words could we connect to young entrepreneurship?、Hmm, first thing came to my mind would be business、mm -hmm. and the thing. Things about、uh, making business, like sales, products, manufacturing,、mm -hmm. and、uh, how you promote your products,、mm -hmm. and of course design as well. We can、yes. talk about design as well, especially if we're going to talk about people who want to be artisans, for example.、Mm -hmm. Young adults is another good one that we can include. After all, they're the ones who we're talking about. And some other words that we could include would be graduate, G R A D U A T E, same as graduate, the verb,、mm -hmm. but graduate, the noun, we pronounce differently. So a graduate. Is the person who's graduated? We could talk about specializing. Specialize is a verb, and it means to be very good or experienced at one thing.、Mm -hmm. So, an artisan might be specialized in making, designing, and selling coffee cups. That's yes, all they、yes. do, and they know a lot about that.、Mm -hmm. Or we could talk about the employment or unemployment rate. So, if we were going to write a longer passage, we couldn't、yes. do this in 120 words. But if we were doing a long passage, we might want to open. 
this up. Why are so many people starting their own businesses? Is there a high unemployment rate? Because yeah. if there aren't many jobs, maybe people are trying to make money in different ways. Yes. So that's another thing you can think about. And mm-hmm. lastly, career ladder, mm-hmm. which I think is a great idiomatic expression because mm-hmm. you know that a ladder is something you climb yes. to get up a wall or a house or whatever. A career ladder are the steps you take to get from a low job after you graduate to a high one in management yeah. or running your own <laughs> company. So these are all really good things that we can talk about. Mm-hmm. Right, so we have our vocabulary ready and we've studied the graph. It's time for an outline. We're going to use a topic sentence structure to plan our essays. Topic sentences, you'll remember, are statements we make at the beginning of a paragraph so that the reader knows exactly what we are talking about. Mm-hmm. As this is a two-paragraph essay, we are going to have two topic sentences. So let's look at the first of them now. Mm-hmm.好，马上呢，我们就要来开始拟定我们这个大纲了。拟定大纲的时候呢，我们当然首先就是需要一个主题句，这个topic他说呢, this graph shows what young adults think about starting their own businesses. Okay, 他就说呢, 这个图表呢, 呈现出来, 这些年轻人呢, 对于他们自己创业呢, Mm-hmm, right. And if you look at your magazines now, you'll see that we are going to back up this statement with a couple of other points, mm-hmm. smaller points, which can back up our argument. The first one is it includes six options. So we obviously need to talk about what the responses are, how many there are. The second one, the top response was artisan with 70%. Again, it's always important to talk about the most popular yes. response yes. because normally that's where we get our most important conclusions from. We'll get to that later. And our our third point, cafe owner and social media manager got 62% and 45%. Mm-hmm. So those are all pretty descriptive, but if we have the word count, we can expand on them by interpreting the data a little bit. So those are your two main tools for attack when you're talking about graphs. Mm-hmm. You want to describe and you want to interpret. Interpret, remember, is to work out a conclusion on your own based on the information that you have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 好, 因为在这边我们其实就是描述图表内容看到什么就写什么 if I could run my own business I chose both artisan and cafe owner okay, 如果我可以开始创业的话呢, Okay, nice. That's a good start, but we don't want to leave it there, obviously. No. If that's where you end your passage, it's a little bit no. short. You can't just answer the question that's on the paper yeah, yeah. with one sentence. You're going to get zero points for that <laughs> in your exams. We need to expand on that. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the points that the sample is making, you'll see a good example of a good essay planning technique. After you make a statement, like our topic sentence, ask it a few W word questions. So you know the what, where, when, and whys. This will give you more information and back up your point. And if you're trying to convince somebody of something, it also helps give them more reasons to believe you. Mm-hmm. If you say that the most popular sport in Taiwan is basketball, mm-hmm. and then you leave it at that, <laughs> that's just your opinion. If you then follow it with some statistics, a yeah. study you looked at, some interviews with experts, then okay. suddenly people are going to believe what yes. you're saying. <laughs> so it's the same here, a different topic, but the same basic principle. So let's look at that statement. If I could run my own business, I'd choose both artisan and cafe owner. So if we're talking about being a cafe owner, what kind of cafe would my cafe be? Well, we could say I would open a cafe with a creative workshop. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we see how we're connecting those two. We have the coffee service and we also have activities and things that we can sell. So there's another question. What kind of handicrafts or craft activities would my cafe have? So it says here, I would host DIY events and sell crafts. Okay, so now we know what kind of activities we're doing. It's good to finish off this point by saying why we think this is a good idea. And our reason here is good coffee would attract more people to the shop. So my cafe Mm -hmm. would help the shop and maybe the other way around too. Maybe the shop would also help the cafe. Yeah, because you have like different Mm -hmm. events. So you kind of set yourself apart from normal cafe. 
Exactly, and people might get a bit tired. They might yeah. think, okay, I want a break, and oh, there's a cafe here. I should stop and have a coffee.、Mm -hmm. So you want to open a cafe and a store, but what are you going to sell? Will you do any activities? And most importantly, why do you want to do this? Why do you think people will like it? What benefits will it bring? These are all things that we can put in our outline. So last off, we want to give a quick conclusion to tie everything together. So in the article, we see I think a creative cafe. Space would be a great business to run. So we're just confirming this is why I want to do it. Okay, so we've given you all of the basic building blocks, all the things that you need to know to get started.、Mm -hmm. Let's pause now, and then we'll have a look at the basic sample and some of the key phrases and words that we can learn from it. Basic sample. This graph shows some responses by young adults when they were asked about starting their own businesses. The graph includes six options: artisan, cafe owner, social media editor, mobile food truck owner, tour guide, and internet celebrity. The top response was artisan. Seventy percent of the respondents expressed interest in making and selling handmade goods. Cafe owner and social media manager came in at 62% and 45%. If I could be my own boss and start one of these businesses, I would choose both artisan and cafe owner. I would open a cafe that also served as a creative workshop. I would host DIY events and make and sell certain kinds of crafts. Of course, good coffee and snacks would attract more people into the shop as well. I think a creative cafe space would be a great business to own. Okay, so that is a pretty solid start. I think it ticks all the boxes of what we need to look at, but there are some things that we can focus on here. Firstly, the、mm -hmm. word response, which we are using as a noun here. A response is a reply that we give to something. So this can be an official or formal response, or something more casual. So, for example, her response shocked me. What、mm -hmm. she said back to me shocked me. But we could also say the government's response to this serious. Challenge from the outside、mm -hmm. was very quick. So we're saying that they officially released a statement and they were very quick about it. When you're writing about studies and surveys, you're also going to want to know the word respondent too. And a respondent is someone who responds to a question or study. So, for example, this study had a sample size of 50 respondents. We asked 50 respondents some questions、yes. to get this information.、Mm -hmm. Response 呢，这个字就是一个名词哦。它的动词呢是 respond 或者是 reply， 就是回复的意思。那 response 这个字哦，它可以这个很 casual 的，比方说刚刚讲说哦，它回答你的一句话，或者说政府对。对于什么事件的一个回应，它可以正式呢，也可以很口语。那对于什么事情的回复呢？我们通常就会加 to、哦。OK， so far the responses to our campaign have been positive。OK， 呃，目前为止呢，对于这个我们的广告的 feedback， 我们收到的这个回复呢，都是正向的。那这个 to 是一个介系词，后面接一个事情。那另外呢，刚刚 Seb 提到另外一个单词 ，respondent 指的呢，就是这个问卷的受测者，参与访问调查的这些人。嗯哼 ，And we also saw a very nice phrase here as well. Express interest in something. So you might already know the word express. We use that to say that we are showing our emotions、mm -hmm. or showing our opinions, either in a physical way or through words. So when we express interest in something, we show we are interested in it. The passage is saying that seventy percent of respondents were interested in making and selling things.、Mm -hmm. We can also use express interest in formal letters to mean I would like or I want to. And lastly, we can change it slightly, and we can say that we. Express interest in someone, and that could either mean an employer is interested in hiring one person.、Mm -hmm. They might send a message to express their interest in hiring that person,、mm -hmm. or it could also mean to like somebody in a romantic way、oh, as、okay. well. <laughs> so he expressed his interest in her by buying her flowers,、mm -hmm. for example.、Mm -hmm. 好 ，interest 这个字哦，就是兴趣的意思。所以呢，人对什么事情有兴趣呢，我们就可以说 be interested in something
。那注意到呢，我们这边用这个 in 呢来接上感兴趣的事情，比方说呢，我们问卷里面有 70% 的人对于这个做东西、卖东西有兴趣啊。OK， 或者是我们可以 interested in 人。OK， 可能是比方说你觉得他很不错，想要找他来我们公司上班，还是呢你这个暗恋他，觉得哎他很不错，可以想要跟他交往都可以哦。那 Seth 另外提到呢，这个 express interest in something 对什么事情表达兴趣。嗯哼。And lastly, we saw came in at, which is another useful phrase, especially when talking about statistics. We can use this one when we're talking about how someone or something did in a competition, or when we're ordering the results of a survey, like we are doing here. So, for example, if we're talking about a running race and we have、mm -hmm. a girl called Georgina, we could say that she came in ninth at the big running race. That means that she was the ninth person to cross the finish line.、Mm -hmm. Come in, 呢这个片语呢有很多很多很多的意思啊，在这边它可以是比赛得到的名次，你得到第几名。那它也可以表示，比方说你要进来一个房间。请进，或者是呢，什么产品推出，什么东西开始流行？其实呢，我们都是使用 come in 这个片语。Mm -hmm. And lastly, we saw the word space, a creative space, and we're using space here as a generic term, so a kind of like useful use it as you like term for a venue, business, or building. So, for example, you might know share space or co-working spaces,、mm -hmm. and these are very popular nowadays. They're basically areas where you can just rent part of an office、mm -hmm. to use for your business, but you're sharing it with lots of other people at the same time. So, this is a space. This is a Co-working space. We could also talk about safe spaces. For example, a safe space for LGBTQ youth, and that is an area or organization、mm -hmm. where gay, lesbian, trans teens can go, where they know that they won't be bullied and they can feel safe.、Mm -hmm. So here, space is not literally meaning the empty bits of a room. We're talking、yes. about something <laughs> actually physical that has a use.、Mm -hmm. Space 这个词哦，其实就是指地方，但是呢，在这边不是真的一个空地哦，它可以是一个概念或者一个空间。比方说呢，像是我们说这个办公空间，或者说像我们刚刚讲到一个组织，在这个地方呢，你是可以感到很安全的，等等哦，这些呢，我们都可以用 space 这个单字来表达。嗯哼 ，Right, let's take a look now at the advanced sample. Advanced sample. This bar graph shows the kinds of businesses young adults in Taiwan would like to start as an alternative to working for established companies. Seventy percent of people surveyed. Said they'd like to get involved with handicrafts, making and selling their own goods. Meanwhile, the notion of owning a cafe was also popular, with 62% of people showing interest. Other popular choices were managing social media, running a mobile food truck, working as a tour guide, and becoming an internet celebrity. Given the choice of these six careers, I'd like to be a tour guide. On large group tours organized by travel agencies. Everyone is always rushed from place to place. If I were my own boss, however, I would give tours to individuals or very small groups and spend more time getting to know Taiwan. I am passionate about my country, and I love regaling people with its history. I also love Taiwanese cuisine, so I could show everyone the best places to eat. That's why being a tour guide would be the perfect job for me. Okay, so as usual, the advanced sample is a little bit more eloquent.、Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit more detail, a lot、yes. of interesting structures there. The first useful word we can see there is alternative, which is a noun, and basically this is a quite common word we use to mean another option for something. So you can see in this sentence, young adults in Taiwan would like to start as an alternative to working for established businesses.、Mm -hmm. So instead of working for established businesses, they would like to start their own. Companies, so that is how we use alternative there. But we could also use it as an adjective as well. So we can look at the alternative options, for example, or alternative routes to get from one place to another、mm -hmm. if there is more than one route. Yes. 好，所以呢，这边我们首先看到了这个 alternative 这个字呢，它可以当做形容词哦，它就是这个替代的有选择的。比方说，我们刚刚讲说这个 alternative plan 替代方案，或者是呢这个 alternative route 这个替代道路。那它呢这个字当然也可以当成名词，就是你。Mm -hmm. And、uh, handicraft, I think, is another really useful one to do. Now, this one is actually a combination of two words, and when you pull it apart, you can see、yes. what it really means. <laughs> handicraft comes from handy, which is normally spelt with a y, and craft. So. 
something handy is something that we do with our hands, shogong. So <laughs> if we have something which is a craft, something we've built or made, and it's a handicraft, then that is something that one person has designed. So quite often, if you go to, for example, parts of southern Taiwan, parts of yeah. Southeast Asia, you'll find lots of local minorities, Aboriginal groups, or just people in countryside areas yes. selling local handicrafts. Ah, uh, yes. So woodwork and weaving and all things like that. So mm -hmm. these are all examples of that. But if you go to Yongkang Street as well and you check out some <laughs> of the stores there, then you will see a lot of handicrafts there. A lot mm -hmm. of typical Taiwanese handicrafts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Handicraft 这个字呢，其实就是拆成两个字哦，就是 handy 跟 craft。所以呢，其实就是手工艺或者是手工艺品的这个技巧，或是呢它的成品都可以叫做 handicraft。另外呢，我们看到 notion 这个单词 ，we saw the word notion。We did, we did.、Yeah. The notion of owning a cafe was also popular. That was how we used it in the sentence. Now, the notion of is kind of like the idea of or the concept of.、Mm -hmm. So, quite often we will use this more in formal writing、mm -hmm. or in more formal reports. Normally, as kind of like an adverbial phrase. If we take it out, if we just say owning a cafe is popular, that means that、mm -hmm. lots of people have their own cafe. But if we start the sentence with the notion of owning a cafe. We don't necessarily mean that people actually have a cafe.、Mm -hmm. It means that the thing that's popular is the idea of、yes. having a cafe. So that would be the same as saying the difference between the notion of having a boyfriend and having a boyfriend. Yeah, different. it's different.、So、some people are in love with their boyfriends, and some people are in love with the notion of having a boyfriend, <laughs> which is two very different things.、Yes. Um, <laughs> Definitely. <笑>好，所以呢 ，notion 这个单词哦，就表示想法或是见解。那呢，什么样的想法，我们就可以说 the notion of。比方说，在这边我们说 the notion of owning a cafe， 开一间咖啡店的这个念头。但是呢，你并不是真的开了一间咖啡店了。嗯哼。And lastly, there was a word in this passage which I really, really, really love,、mm -hmm. and that is regale, which is not the most common word, and it means to entertain people with a story.、Mm -hmm. So normally a very long story or a Story that really interests people, really gets people excited about something. So we don't use this very frequently, but it is a great word for creative writing. Here are some other story words you can use too. We could talk about narrating as well. That's、mm -hmm. N A R R A T E. And that basically just means to give a spoken or written account of something.、Mm -hmm. So, you know, we could talk about somebody narrating events through a news report, or、mm -hmm. we could also talk about a character in a book narrating something. So it doesn't actually have to be the writer who is doing the narrating. And lastly, one thing that we all do: reminisce,、mm -hmm. which is a verb which is spelt R E M I N I S C E, reminisce. And when we reminisce, we look back fondly on our past, and we're talking. About something that we kind of miss or we feel nostalgic about,、mm -hmm. some the good old days, basically.、Yes. We reminisce about the good old days. 嗯哼，好，最后呢，我们看到句子里面用了这个 regale 这个动词哦，它其实就是盛宴或是款待的意思。所以，我们句子的意思就是用台湾丰富的文化、丰富的历史呢来款待、来招待这些外国旅客。Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Today we've learned about entrepreneurship, describing and analyzing data,、mm -hmm. and learned some interesting facts about Taiwan along the way. So, do you think you might be a little bit more interested in starting a business for yourself, Sam?、Uh, maybe, kind of. Maybe it is a lot of work, though, right? <laughs>、yeah. you, you've got to do quite a lot of planning before yes, you can actually yes, start a business. Yes, yeah, and where's the money coming from? Exactly. I think I'm just going to watch Netflix.、Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, while I watch Netflix, you guys have to. Get on preparing for your entrance exam, so you get started on writing your graph text now, and we will join you again soon for some more exciting English for English Digest. I'm Seb, and I'm Sam, and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye. bye.